On the left, I have the Ruby on Rails application that we're going to be creating in this video. So I can just hit new profile and then I can create a new profile and I'll add the link to my YouTube. I'll add the link to my Twitch. I don't actually have a Twitch or a Twitter or an email, so I'm just going to add the YouTube link and I can say other as well. Then I can hit create profile and this application is going to be really useful for people that just want to display all of their socials on one website. So you can just link to this website and it will show you all of the person's socials. You can click on them so I can just open the link in new tab and it works. And so that's what we're going to be creating in this video. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is create a new Rails project. And we can't just create a new folder, we actually have to do this via the command line. So we have to run a command on our PC that will create the new Rails project for us. So you have two options, you can either use the terminal in VS Code, or you can search up CMD if you're on Windows, or you can search up Terminal if you're on Mac. So to create a new Rails project, all you have to do is run the command Rails new, which creates a new Rails project, and then we have to name the project so I'm just going to call it link tree clone. So hit enter. And this is going to create a new Rails application that is named link tree clone. So in the terminal, you'll see lots of using and creating files. And this is just how Rails is done, how it works. It's just creating all these files. And so now that the command has finished processing, what we have to do is actually go to the folder which we just created the Rails project. So click on file and then open folder. And then I know that I created it. I know where I created it. And you just need to know where you created it. And you can just scroll back up in the terminal if necessary. So now I can edit this Rails app. But what I want to do is open the terminal so we can actually run the Rails server and view the web page. So run the command Rails S, which starts the Rails server, which means we can actually view it on our browser. And then all we have to do is go to localhost 3000. So again, we run Rails S, which means we can view it in our browser. And I'm just going to click on this link. And it will take me to this link or this URL. And as you can see, it tells me the Rails version that I'm using. And it tells me the Ruby version that I'm using. And I get the Rails logo. So now that we know that everything is working, we can actually begin to build the app. So we know everything's working. So I'm just going to stop the server. And we're going to create a new scaffold. And the scaffold can be called anything. For example, videos, users, posts. And it just means that users of your application or your website can create, edit, read, and destroy these scaffolds. So let's, so I'll give you an example. So let's say we said Rails G scaffold profiles. And so now we're letting the users create, read, update, and destroy profiles. So they could create their profile, they could read other people's profiles, they could edit their own profile, and they could destroy or delete their own profile. So after this command, we have to specify what columns we actually want in this table. So profiles is the table and columns will be things that the profile actually has. So a column would be like a, a name or a description. So I'm just gonna say name string YouTube string because we want the user to be able to link to their YouTube. Twitch string, Twitter string, email string, and then maybe other string. So I'm gonna hit enter. And to recap, this command is going to make it so that users can already create, read, update, and destroy a profile table. So then we just need to run the Rails S, which is again to start the server and make it so that we can actually view the application. And if I refresh, we're actually going to get an error. And this error says migrations are pending. To resolve this issue, run Rails DB migrate. And this is because we just created a migration. We can check that we just created a migration. If we go to DB migrate and then see this new file, there won't be any file here if you haven't created a migration. And so what we have to do is migrate this migration to the database to actually change the database. I'm going to stop the server and run a command called rails db migrate. And this command will actually change the database and make it so that this profiles table is there. And now we can run rails s and this error should go away. So we've created a scaffold, but we haven't actually seen the scaffold yet. So what we need to do is to root to the scaffold index page. So come to config roots.rb. And this is the file where we can define your application routes per the DSL. What that means is we can define the actual pages on our in our application. So I'm going to say root profiles hashtag index. And what this is going to do is make it so that the root of the application or where the user naturally goes to when they enter the URL points to a page. And that page is in app views profiles index.html.erb. And so just make the user land on this page whenever they enter the URL. So if we save that file, that config, that roots.rb file, so come to that file, save, refresh. If I refresh again, as you can see, I can actually create a new profile 
I can enter the name, so I can say uh, Malachi's profile. I can enter the URL of my YouTube. So I'm going to say hbsyoutube.com slash Malakel. And I, I can enter all the other fields as well. I can hit create profile. I can then edit the profile. And as you can see, we get all of the fields. Edit it. I'll just add another Twitch update. And as you can see in the other, it says Twitch update or Twitch. And then I can just delete it. I'm not going to delete it because what I want to show you is actually really cool. If I get rid of that tab and then I go back to the page, as you can see, it's still there because this was actually saved to the database, which is really important to know. So for every user that goes on this site now, they will see Maliki's profile, they will see Maliki's YouTube link, and they won't see Maliki's Twitch, Twitter, email because he hasn't filled it in. Now, one thing that I already don't like about this application is that any user can destroy Maliki's profile or they can delete Maliki's profile. So what I'm going to do is go to app controllers and profiles controller. And I want to make it so that no user can delete a profile because this is a beginner's tutorial. If we had more time, I would make it so that Maliki could delete his profile and no one else could. But for that, we'd have to use user authentication and we're not going to do that in this video. So again, I'm going to come to app controllers and profiles controller.rb and I'm just going to get rid of profile.destroy and then get rid of this code. And so now when I save that and refresh, and then I try and delete it, nothing will happen because there is no code in the actual method or the action. So now no one can delete profiles, that's good. And we just need to remove this button because it doesn't do anything. To do that, what we need to do is go to app, views, profiles, show.html.erb, and we need to get rid of this button that says destroy this. And while we're here, we're actually just going to get rid of this link that says edit this because we don't want any user to be able to edit another user's profile. So save that and refresh. And as you can see, you can't delete or edit. And to make sure that no user can just go, and to make sure that no user can just go in the URL, say edit, we need to actually get rid of the controller action. So come to, and I'm just gonna add this little bit of code to the edit action in my controllers, profiles controller.rb. And this makes it so that whenever someone tries to edit a profile, say they just edit the URL to make sure it's just say edit, it will actually take them back to the root of the application or the home page because we don't want anyone to be able to edit profiles. All right, so so far we've got an application where people can just create profiles. And this is already really, really good. We've been doing this how long? I'll check. Uh, 12 minutes, probably lower for you. Now, something that I really want to do because the application will just look a lot better is add a library that will add some CSS to the application. So I'm going to search up in a new tab, simple CSS CDN. CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. CSS is Cascading Style Sheets. And we're just going to click on the first link. And then we're just going to scroll down and add these links to our views, applica layouts, application to html.erb. And this is inside of the app folder. So add this line to that file. And we're just going to get rid of these comments. We don't want them. And then save and refresh. And we should get a completely different looking app. And as you can see, we do. So everything looks a little bit better now. We just changed the colors and the fonts and maybe the sizes. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is not display the Twitch, Twitter, email if there is actually nothing there. So I'm just going to make this simple on ourselves. And we're just going to come to app, views, profiles, underscore profile. And we're just going to get rid of the strong or the bold Twitch, Twitter, email, and other. Save and refresh. And as you can see, it's just a little bit nicer. And the next thing that we want to do is actually make this link clickable. And to do that, we'd have to just add a link underscore two. So if we just add a go to, I can just say profile.youtube, comma, profile.youtube. And so now it takes us to the actual YouTube URL. So that's pretty cool. The next thing that we want to do is come to views, profiles, index.html.erb. And we don't want to render all these profiles on the home page. Imagine you have products and you don't want to render every single one. So I'm just going to get rid of this whole div. And we don't want to render any of them. And so now it's just really simple. You can just create a profile. And as you can see, we can just create a profile. It actually looks loads better. Add the YouTube link. We'll say at Malika, create profile. 
And now, let's say this was an actual URL. I could just share this URL to anyone, let's go on Discord, and they'll be able to access my YouTube link. So this application is already coming together quite nicely. I don't want this tutorial to be that long, so we're actually going to end it there. I have many other tutorials about Rails and how to do useful things that I would add to this application on my channel. So check out those if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.